We are living in this very uninsulated cabin in the middle of the forest and during winter it gets quite cold to say the least. Right now it's like minus five degrees Celsius outside and I'm having to wear a jacket inside to stay warm. So in this video I'm gonna show you how we actually keep warm through the cold and dark winter here in northern Sweden. So the very first thing I do every single morning is to light a fire. Because as I said, it gets <laughs> quite cold these days. So as long as I have this going, it gets quite warm quite fast, I would say. I would say. But we're also actually using this heat from this stove um, to heat the bedroom upstairs as well. And we've done mm. that in a what I think is kind of a smart way. So I'll show you that later. But first I need to get this one going. So this stove here basically heats the kitchen and this living room. And when this is going, I honestly sit here for uh, <laughs> quite a while uh, with my back against it, just getting some heat up maybe, getting some tea or reading a book or checking my phone. Uh, before moving on to the next thing. But I thought I would show you what I mean by uninsulated cabin so you understand how yeah, how simple this cabin, cabin actually is. This is what I mean. These logs right here on the outside, obviously, <laughs> is also the logs that are on the inside. This is just one layer of logs and that's it. There's no insulation on the outside, there's no insulation on the inside only these logs but the benefit of these ones is that when they get when they're getting hot or at least room temperature if that makes sense they keep really good heat they store the heat really well from the inside um, here you can see <laughs> a bit of the insulation that is supposed to be within or not within but in between the logs but the birds around here which are quite a lot of them love to pick these out um, so it's like a full-time job full-time job just putting them back in uh, but I actually enjoy these logs a lot maybe one day in the future we're gonna insulate it a bit further but for now it works perfectly fine as long as we're home and keeping a fire going it works really well actually but the fire is not the only thing we need to keep this house warm before I forget it I just want to share that we're right now working on a very special project which I'm overly excited about we have started building a a-frame right up here in the forest, like about 80 meters from this main cabin, so to speak. And I've been sharing it on Instagram and also in two community posts here on YouTube. So you might have seen some of the progress, uh, but that's gonna be in my next video. I'm gonna share a lot of details on how the building process is going. Uh, but I just wanna share some photos with you now so you can see that we actually have started. And if you have any questions about it, just let me know. I'm so happy about it so far and we made a lot of progress in just three days and here in the kitchen we have this what we call a wood burning stove so we cook breakfast lunch and dinner here and this also serves as a like a heating source for the cabin so it gets really warm and it also stores the heat for a long time actually um, the only problem is that in the winter it's really convenient because it gets heat through the cabin as well but the <laughs> problem in the summer for instance it gets equally, equally warm then when it's like a, yeah, extremely hot on the outside. So we have to open up all the windows and the doors and everything. Uh, otherwise it's gonna be like a, a sauna in here. But as you can see here, this pipe leads directly into the chimney. And normally it just lets the smoke out that way and then the smoke travels up uh, the chimney and then out. But we actually made a different solution here. I'm gonna show you in the living room. Here by the fire you can see this silvery pipe going straight up there so it's actually not the smoke going up the chimney it's actually one pipe from the kitchen stove and then one pipe from this stove right here and those goes those goes all the way through the chimney and then out so and then we have actually blocked around the the pipes on the top of the chimney if that makes sense so all the heat that goes up right here right now bounces back down again because when I lived here in the very beginning, I didn't even have this one, which meant <laughs> when I was making a fire here, which I had to do all the time, um, 
the heat was just let out all the time, um, which was not, not very convenient. But these pipes actually helps us keep the bedroom warm as well. So we're gonna check that out now. So this is what we've done. This is obviously the chimney right here. And like I said downstairs, instead of letting, a smoke, letting the smoke go through the chimney, the smoke goes through the pipes and the heat goes in the chimney on the side of the, the pipe, pipes if that makes sense. And since the top of the chimney is blocked, the, the heat is just bouncing, going up and then bouncing down again and up and down and keeping the chimney warm. But here's the clever thing. We've installed this thing right here, what I would call like a, a metal valve. Um, so when this is closed, the heat just goes up the chimney and down again and down into the kitchen and living room. But if I open it, ta-da, heating source for the bedroom. So now when I hold my hand right here, I can really feel the heat from the fire downstairs, but there's no smoke. Okay, there is some smoke sometimes when you know when you open the, the stove back and forth and that smoke gets caught in my clothing so I usually smell like smoke all the time but I'm actually okay with that. The fire has been going for about 30 minutes now so I actually <laughs> don't need this anymore it's getting <laughs> way too hot but this system of heating a cabin with a stove like this or actually two stoves works when you're awake. But as soon as we go to bed, this gets cold and the cabin starts to get cold. So last year, to solve this problem, I actually installed what we call, uh, what we call a air heating pump. Uh, so it sits here on the wall. I have a remote to it and it's like, you can put it to like 18 degrees Celsius or something during the night. And then it's at least maybe 10 degrees right now in the morning. So we don't have to start at zero when we wake up to start a fire. Uh, but last night I forgot to put it on because we had guests. So this morning I had to start from like two degrees or something and that's a bit too cold. Uh, <laughs> so that pump has actually saved us a lot to just keep the heat kind of stable during the night and also actually helps us, uh, makes our plants survive when we don't, when, when we're visiting friends or so, so on and like we're not here in the cabin because <laughs> I've had a lot of plants die in this cabin when I didn't have the, the air heating pump. I thought I would show you what the pump looks like on the outside as well. It's getting so dark so quickly now when, when we're getting closer to winter. I don't know if you know if you can see me now, hang on. Like that. So this is the pump from the outside. Uh, but we only use this during winter time. Summer it's warm as it is. So we put this on and start using it during nighttime, maybe in yeah, starting in November, I would say, and then all the way to maybe March or April. But otherwise, we just depend on the uh, the firewood, actually. I actually, actually show that to you while we're already outside. This is the the woodshed right here. So it's two different compartments, which makes it way easier to dry the wood because the firewood needs to dry about a year before it gets really good. Uh, so this way. We can start with the ones that were from a bit of last year and they are really dry right now. And this right here is the fresh wood we got just a couple of months ago. And that needs to rest for a while uh, before we can use it. And I would say we use around, <laughs> it really depends on the winter and how cold it gets. But I would, say, I would say in general, we use around maybe 10 to 12 cubic meters of firewood each year. So it's quite a lot. We could make it way easier on ourselves by installing some radiators or something. But I kind of like it to be able to heat the cabin with firewood. And yeah, we have the air heating pump as well, but mostly we just use this. And I can't really put, on, put words on it why I like it, but I guess it has something to do with it adds some form of meaning. You have to, I don't want to say fight, but yeah, almost. You have to fight for keeping warm. Um, it, you have to put in a bit of effort to keep warm and in that way you don't take stuff like that for granted because when I was living in like a normal apartment in the city there was always heat you know I never thought about that I could be cold in the same way so 
when I moved here and it was just freezing cold. I didn't have the stove in the kitchen. I didn't have this. I didn't have the air heating pump. I was freezing. I don't want to do that again, <laughs> but I can at least appreciate what I have today. And no matter what happens in the world or the electricity runs out or something, I can still keep warm and I can still make food in the kitchen. Everything will still work and we have the uh, all our water we take from the, the dam or the stream running down from the mountain. We don't have any running water in the kitchen at all or nowhere in the cabin. So that adds meaning somehow. We can keep warm, we can get food, we can have the water and yeah, it is a bit tricky sometimes and it's not always easy. But simple living is not easy living, that's not the point. Um, for me, simple living is adding some form of meaning to my life, I think. Yeah, maybe call it more meaningful or more intentional living, maybe. And when it comes to the insulation of this cabin, we're actually making a major improvement on this hallway right here. Because this floor right here is the only floor that is not insulated in the cabin. It's insulated in the, the living room and the kitchen as well but not this, which means that <laughs> we have to have this door right here always closed to the, the living room because all the heat will just disappear this way. Um, because, and all the cold is just getting sucked through the, this just, it's these planks. There's no insulation at all. So next weekend, my friend, my very good friend Lars is actually coming here. He's a carpenter and we're gonna tear up the floor. We're gonna take this the staircase down and we're gonna renovate and insulate and make it really cozy. I'm not gonna be able to see any difference <laughs> but I will hopefully feel a difference when we can actually have this door all the way open all year round because I miss using this hallway. It's a bit sad that this always has to be cold um, but by fixing this floor it will hopefully help. When it comes to the material we're using when we're insulating we're using this. It's called wooden fiber. It's totally organic and free from toxins and everything else because for some reason the industry standard, industry standard uh, when it comes to insulation is filled with shit. Like really toxic stuff that is not good for you. Um, and companies are using it or private people as well. They're using it because that's the cheapest option. But my thought is that like you're gonna live with this in your walls or in your ceiling um, why not put some extra money into it and just get a healthy option? Because we insulated our roof last year and that was with this wooden fiber. It worked extremely well. There's a lot of different kinds of these, but I think it's really important when you're looking at the renovation uh, or when you're about to renovate whatever, um, it's really important to think about what materials you're using. because. That's gonna affect the air you're breathing, how you're feeling in your body. Like it's equally important to what kind of food you're eating. And it's equally important to think about what kind of materials, materials you're putting in your surroundings. When it comes to like the wood you're using, what it, how is that treated? What is the insulation made out of? Everything matters. So that is one thing I would really urge you to think about when it comes to renovations or things in general in life. Like, Think about what you're surrounding yourself with because these choices matter in the long run and it's not gonna affect you short term maybe but long term they might. If you have any questions about it I would happily answer as much as possible and we're also gonna talk a lot about the insulation and what kind of materials we're using when uh, when I'm gonna show you the A-frame because that then we really thought about uh, the materials we're using so yeah I guess more on that later. One thing I would like to say though, is that we're in November right now, as you <laughs> probably know, and I put up a goal for myself to reach 200,000 subscribers before the end of this year. And right now it's like one and a half months left. And I think we're like 12,000 away at this point. So it's gonna be really tight. But if you like the kind of content I share, share, I will be very happy if you subscribe, if you get any value from it, so to speak. And if you like this video, you're more than welcome to like it because that actually helps YouTube to spread the video. And if you wanna watch more of my videos, you can click right over there 
that will take you to at least one or two and maybe over there you will have another one that you can watch. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you guys next Sunday with the A-frame video.